In the fall of 2011, I had a cup of coffee with an area chaplain and a local 141 member about what the role might be of a chaplain, if there was one, in our Green Bay metro area. For the last year, that role has been drinking a lot of firehouse coffee and having some good bantering with firefighters and engineers and paramedics in our greater Green Bay area. Even an occasional 24-hour shift I've been through to try and understand the life of a Green Bay fire and rescue man or woman. What I can say is that it is far less glamorous than I might have thought. These men and women have to go from a state of high awareness and exertion to a necessary state of relaxation and back again to stress and high stress multiple times a day and night. One of the quotes, and I love quotes around the firehouse, that really connected with me a few months ago was, we have to deal with a lot of, parentheses, people who don't need us just to be ready for the few a day or a few a week that really do need us. That quote brought me back to my calling. Sometimes we feel that the unneeded pull in multiple directions to those who really don't need us makes it not worth doing the job that we do. But that is certainly not the case for those who do need us. So recently, I was asked to do an article for the local news fire news called Smoke Signals. The assignment was the history of the Maltese Cross. So, it turns out in 1098, the Crusades, uh, recapturing Jerusalem from uh, those from Islam who had taken it, uh, that there were many casualties and that there were uh, many displaced, impoverished people and King sent the knights that he called the Knights of Hospitaller to go and uh, rectify the situation of all the displaced and, and injured people. And he put a hospital in Jerusalem called St. John's Hospital. Well, because of that, often the uh, knights were referred to as the Knights of St. John, but also because of the name of the Hospitallers, the Knights of Hospitallers, the hospital became known as the Hospital. And those knights had a very similar job to modern-day firefighters because as those uh, Islamic peoples had learned how to create these fire bombs and they would lob them into the walls of the city, the hospitalers would take the injured comrades and would take them off to the hospital of St. John and, uh, and run into the fire, run into the fray in order to bring their comrades to safety. These knights, though, were eventually driven out of Jerusalem to the islands of Cyprus and Malta, and uh, they defended the island of Malta all the way till the 1700s when Napoleon landed on its shores, and uh, they surrendered to Napoleon at that time, not willing to fight uh, a fellow Christian. The Maltese cross is certainly a storied symbol and is the core of symbols of all modern-day fire and rescue departments. In my written version of my blog, I wrote about how the four tongues, or you could interpret them as the eight tongues, they all related to the main four countries and the eight countries in Europe that uh, Knights of Hospitallers were able to continue in. But one point of agreement is that those four tongues represent the most core character qualities of the Knights who bore them. And those qualities are faith, justice, temperance, and fortitude. I want to talk about those things in my coming blogs, but let's start with fortitude, which we would know today of as courage. Courage certainly comes to mind as a necessary quality for firefighters and EMS. Many fire departments around the United States have memorials to lift up the example of the courageous acts done by the firefighters of the bombings in the Twin Towers in New York City. Over 343 firefighters, 60 police and port authority, ran in to those desperate, fiery situations while others were running out. Total number of people 
killed in the attacks in New York City, 2,753. Many police officers and, and Port Authority and paramedics and firefighters. But companies lost their employees and, and uh, women lost their husbands and husbands lost their wives and, and children uh, lost their parents. And many bodies were never even found in this atrocity. If you wanted to see more about the way the numbers shake down, I put a link in my website, but it's from New York Magazine, uh, about the numbers of the Twin Tower bombings. You know, 26 days after the 9-11 bombings, we began bombing Afghanistan. Many young people were courageous enough to sign up and go defend our nation against terrorism. All in all, to date, as of April 29th, 2013, 3,291 soldiers have given their lives in Afghanistan. There's no way we can know the why that everyone has displayed courage, that everyone who's given their lives for freedom has done that, or for safety of others has done that. Many people had second thoughts, I'm sure, during the process. Courage doesn't mean not being afraid. It does mean doing what we do even though we are afraid. We do it because it needs to be done, because it's the right thing to do, because no one else will do it, because you value human life or you value freedom. Wherever you show courage, that truly is the question. Why? Why do you show courage? Is it for your own glory? For your own sake? If so, it will eventually go away. Not getting to do what you do sometimes gives you a chance to come to a comprehension of why you do it. We all get burned out at times in our careers. But when you stop doing your passion, either you go on being more deeply hurt from it and talking about that and living with that in mind, or if your passion is properly motivated, your passion for what you do will grow. I learned a lot of things about why I used to pastor during my last two years of being off from pastoring my church. Some of them I'm not so proud of, of why I pastored. I had to come to serious understanding as to whether I did it for me or whether I did it for God. Last week I was in Indiana at my son's house, which is also my grandson's house. In the conversation I was having with my son, my grandson kept interrupting in the background. He kept saying a phrase over and over, Grandpa, Grandpa, over and over again. Until finally I realized I was going to have to talk over him or listen to him. You know, for a three and a half year old, I consider that normal behavior, especially since he's my grandson. But for an adult, hopefully, they've grown past that methodology. See, when your motivation becomes wrong, it starts to not work for you any, lo any longer. If your courage is for you, it will go away. When you want to protect you, you don't eventually show courage. Courage is shown when you care about others and for timeless principles more than you care about your own life. In this blog, in the days to come, we'll look at why we do what we do. It does matter, and it will come out. So, until next time, I would challenge you, do what needs to be done. And if you're afraid to do it, do it afraid.